Good morning, everyone. My name is Charles Todd, and I'm the Deputy Dean of Students in the college. I want to thank all of the parents and family members in the room um, for coming and attending our session. Our hope today is to provide you with some useful information on successfully transitioning your student to the college. On behalf of the Dean of Students Office, I want you to know that our staff welcome hearing from parents, if, particularly if you have any concerns. We also want you to know that the empowerment of students is everyone's goal. It is so very important as they take charge of their life and their learning. With that, I want to introduce you to our speakers this morning. First, we're going to hear from Dr. David Albert, Director of Student Counseling Service, followed by Sophia Chackness, Director of Housing and Residence Life. Good morning, everybody. My name is David Albert. I'm a clinical psychologist. I have to not speak too loud, apparently, next to this mic. Um, I'm a clinical psychologist. I'm director of the Student Counseling Service. And I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome you to the University of Chicago and to say a few words about something that is very much on everyone's mind today. I'd like to share some thoughts about letting go. Letting go of our children even our emerging adult children, is not an easy thing to do. It's especially difficult to do in this era of the smartphone, which allows us to electronically tether ourselves to our children with such seductive ease. Gone are the days of the Sunday evening telephone check-in. Now it's all texts and Instagram and Facebook and Twitter all the time. Now we're able to instantly share pictures with our children of what we're eating for dinner. Never in my wildest dreams as a college student did I envision such a thing, and I must confess that I was never particularly interested in what my parents were eating for dinner. <laughs> it takes real effort to step back and give our children room to live their lives with some degree of autonomy and privacy. It's harder than ever to do this. But I would like to suggest to you that it's more important than ever to do this. The metaphor that comes to mind, and it's likely familiar to most of you, is teaching our children to ride a bike. I once asked my youngest son what his happiest early childhood memory was. His answer was very meaningful to me. He said, my happiest memory is when you were teaching me to ride a bike, and I was pedaling, and I looked at you, and I realized that you are no longer holding on. His answer surprised me. My son took a pretty rough fall later that day, and he was covered in cuts and scrapes and bruises. I felt guilty about that for a long time. But he doesn't remember that part at all. What he recalls is the moment that he realized that he could do this difficult and scary thing on his own. And this memory became a powerful and important one for him. It became part of a critical foundation of memories that he learned to draw upon for strength when confronted with challenges that he alone faced, whether in a classroom or on an athletic field or in a social situation. And later today, when your child approaches Cobb Gate and prepares to enter the Bartlett Quad and join the class of 2021, you will look at your child and you will realize that it's time to let go. And this may be harder for you than for your child, and so it should be. But I encourage you over the next days and weeks and months to let your child learn to ride. Cheer them on, and when they fall, as they inevitably will, know that we are here to help them up. This is an area where the University of Chicago excels. We have a myriad of remarkable support services in place and available to our students. My service, the Student Counseling Service, is one of many examples. So please rest assured that when you leave this campus, your children will not be on their own, but they will be taking a very real step toward independence and self-reliance. And I'm confident that one day they will thank you for this most precious gift. Thank you. Sophia. 
Good morning. I am Sophia Chackness, and I'm the Executive Director of Housing and Residence Life and Assistant Dean in the College. Thank you very much for your time this morning. I really appreciate it. Um, I had the privilege of meeting many of you yesterday at resident dean receptions, during move-in. I bothered some of you at lunch, um, and at the resource fair or other welcome events. Um, first thing I want to say is thank you very much for helping making the move-in for the class of 2021 so very smooth and wonderful. Um, I have heard from many of you that it was the amazing move-in, especially if you've had other students elsewhere, so thank you very much. That is in no small part to you all. Um, my hope this morning is to provide you with some useful information on housing and residence life and how to help support your student through this first year in housing. The Office of Housing and Residence Life provides a safe and welcoming environment. We like to think of it as a home away from home for our students. Our communities are designed and dedicated to supporting students through both wonderful and difficult experiences. When thinking about how you can help your student adjust to living in a new and complex environment, three, faith, three things come to mind. And they, uh, I solicited my staff, both student and professional, uh, for their words of wisdom to pass on to you all, um, which is patience, boundaries, and non-judgment uh, was the overriding theme. Um, colleges can be challenging. Uh, it's a time for confusing relationships, redefined friendships, academic pressures, uh, and lots of transitions for students. And many have a hard time at first. Uh, students have a tendency to call home when they are having an emotionally difficult day, and many choose to share their positive experiences with their friends and a higher proportion of their negative experiences with their families. Um, you can provide some support and encouragement by asking your student to share some of the positive experiences and successes, um, and remember that they're seeking a sounding board for their experience and not necessarily action from you. Feel free to always ask them if they've talked to their RA, who hopefully you met yesterday during move-in, or their resident head, who can also serve as both the sounding board and support system for the student. Students are going to make mistakes as they explore what it means to be an adult, and some of these mistakes are more detrimental than others, but many of them will be important life lessons. The natural inclination is to try to correct our students um, and when they start to head toward the choice that we don't necessarily agree with. Um, and while this is understandable, the end result may be that the student does not learn how to make decisions independently or they begin to hide their bad decisions, choices from you. In Housing Residence Life, our approach is to talk to students and help them understand their decisions. Our approach is non-punitive um, and we try to deal with situations at the lowest level and offer the most amount of resources and support for students. There may come a time during your student's time in housing, whether this year or in the future, that they face a discipline action um, or other difficult situation. Please know that we always, always, always encourage your student to call you first or second after we've sort of worked through this with them. And we cannot generally discuss specifics with you about your student's case, but we are always happy to talk about generalist, general ideas, general terms, other situations like this, and we want to receive your call. Issues of trust sometimes come up, and parents have been involved in your students' lives on a daily basis. Parents wonder what a student is doing when they haven't heard from them. And sometimes you have safety concerns and worry about choices being made in other areas of their lives. Our experience is that students occasionally make unwise choices, but most maintain their value system and the skills necessary to make smart decisions. As part of the trust in housing residence life that we tried to build with your students, we hold that the primary relationship with students is with the resident head, which means that your primary relationship with housing is with your student's assistant director. So hopefully some of you met those folks yesterday during move-in. They actually supervise the RAs and the resident heads, and they are readily available to talk to you about anything and everything in your student in relation to housing. As Dr. Albert articulated, due to advances in technology, such as cell phones, uh, social networking, find my iPhone, um, students and parents stay in touch on a regular basis, um, sometimes super in touch. Anecdotally, I've received a call from a parent. My student is this place at 2 o'clock in the morning. What could they be doing? I don't know. 
but, but I'll find them. Um, but, but to that end, um, parents can help by maintaining a healthy distance and encouraging students to utilize the resources and people in housing and residence life. I encourage you to set a time to check in with your student, whether whatever the regularity of that looks like or day that that looks like, and it's one that you actually will both agree on. Students that, as students navigate college in U Chicago, they begin to grow and they often call home less. This is not uncommon and it's healthy and you are not alone in this occurrence. Resident heads also tell me all the time that by spring quarter, the first year students no longer need them um, with the same, in the same way or with the same level of frequency. So students evolve. Um, to that end, I also want to just mention something that's really important. Um, as you moved in yesterday, you may have noticed that every door you walked by had at least one or many names on it. We are very, very full as of right now. Uh, we have uh, incredible demand for housing this year, which means at current I have two bed spaces on the entirety of campus. That's it. So I want to talk a little bit about roommate conflict which I know there won't be any, so we're good, but in case you hear about it other places, you'll be able to help other people. Um, it's not an uncommon experience for students in the residence halls to adjust to life living with a roommate. Um, many students come to campus having had their own private space for sleep or study, um, and life in the resident hall provides a very different experience. Um, we recognize that the transition from life before college to life at U Chicago is full of hurdles and challenges, and life with a roommate does not need to be an unnecessary challenge. Um, in fact, we think living in the residence halls with a roommate during the first year can be great preparation for living with roommates or housemates during the rest of their college years and life after. The resident heads and RAs are a great resource for students that are struggling with their roommates. These staff are able to help roommate communications about differences, find reasonable solutions to conflicts, and understand when somebody's expectations are unreasonable. I encourage you to talk with your student about the importance of taking responsibility for their experience in, the, in their hall and in their community. If there's a conflict in a room or somebody is struggling to communicate, our staff can be very helpful and provide tips and tools to make communication e easier. And roommate conflicts and disagreements can usually be resolved through communication. Our staff and offers residents an environment that is safe, supportive, and fun, while also providing many opportunities for academic development. I could present many other words of wisdom regarding successfully helping you and your student navigate this new and exciting time, um, but I shall leave it where it is, and thank you very much. So once again, I want to welcome you all on behalf of the Office of the Dean of Students. Right now, I want to talk briefly about the role of our office with both students and parents. The Dean of Students Office consists of a team of advisors and deans. Our advisors are full-time professional advisors who work with students over all four years, regardless of major. We meet regularly with students, helping them to track their progress towards their degree to sort out majors and minors, plan for study abroad, apply for national scholarships and fellowships, provide advocacy for students with faculty and other staff, to brainstorm summer and post-graduation plans, and we do all of this while making sure that we are supporting students who come from a wide variety of backgrounds with different experiences and needs. So we certainly meet with students often, and we provide a lot of support but we also consider our students to be responsible young adults. So what does that mean for them to be young adults? Well, first, our conversations with them are confidential and by law cannot be shared without specific permission from them. Parents who want to know how their students are doing are encouraged to ask them directly. As a rule, the dean of students, our deans, um, our advisors will all contact students if we have communicated with you. Our primary relationship is with students, and so we never want them to feel that we have gone behind their back. Our goal is that students take charge of their education and their learning. That is part of being a responsible young adult. And deans are going to work closely with them to help them do that. So now in thinking about treating our students like responsible adults, 
and helping to empower them to be independent, let me now talk about our relationship with you, the parents. With parents, we hope to have a partnership in seeing that students have a successful and productive college experience. Through the residential house and advising systems, we provide a substantial safety net to ensure that students are being taken care of. We will certainly always reach out to you if there's any significant health or safety concern that poses a significant danger to the student or to others. Parents can partner with us most effectively by being patient and supportive of their student. Encourage them to ask for help if they need it. When parents are too quick to jump in and try to manage their students' issues, it prevents them from learning and growing. If your student reaches out to you and says they don't know what to do about a situation, we have found that it's not effective if you contact us or the dean or the advisor on your student's behalf. Remember, our joint goal is for students to grow into self-sufficient adults. So when your son or daughter says they don't know what to do about a situation, your first question to them should be, have you talked to your advisor or your resident head? Continuing with Dr. Albert's bike metaphor, we should strive to let them attend to their own skin knees. Finally, our college programming office sends out a lot of materials, like our family newsletter and other updates. If you want to receive these, it's very important that your students have updated your contact information, which they can do in their MyU Chicago portal. So the next time you have a chance to talk to them, hopefully later today, be sure to ask them to update this information so that you are getting all of those updates from us. And this ends the formal part of our remarks, and I think we now have about 30 minutes or so for questions from you. Thank you.